I think we are rigging Harlan here. Harlan Pyan from All About Trends is going to come on and give us his outlook. I want some tickers flying out of this chat room for Harlan if he picks up the phone. Harlan, oh, he's there? here. Oh, he's yeah, here. I am here. What's going on? I, I, didn't, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> What's going on? We were talking new old rubber made. Do you trade that one? NWL? Uh, nah. No, nah, I'm not too boring for it. you. Be, too boring for Yeah, Maryland. pretty much. Well, well, look at a spread. It's a two-point spread. You know, twenty-eight and a half to thirty and a half. You know, it's not exactly you know all that exciting. Um, yeah, pretty Don't get me wrong. A couple of points is a couple of points, but uh, but there's other fish to fry. There's better ponds to fish in. So that's what, it's a market of stocks. What ponds are you fishing in right now? Well, you know, let's let's talk Twitter for a second. Okay. Because, uh, you know, if you pull a chart on Twitter, um, it was really a nice pattern. What, two weeks ago we were talking about it? And I missed last week. Had about a Josh Brown, I think. Uh oh. Um, Sorry about looking that. Looking at it. No, 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 Josh. He, hey, the guy pulls no punches. He calls it as he sees it, and you got to respect that. So, but uh, looking at Twitter. Nice pullback off highs. We talked about it, and bam, Namura upgraded it, ran to 35. You know, that, that's good for, like, what, 10%? Yeah. Um, it doesn't look bad here either. You know, it's pulling back. It's filling that gap from uh, one, two, three, four, five days ago, four days ago, five. And, you know, if it crosses to the upside, you could probably take the trade, set a stop of any break into a new low. But let's look at another trade. That looks very similar. S F M. I think it's uh, Sprouts Markets or something. Uh, Sprouts Farmers Market. Sprouts. Sprouts I've Sprouts, I've yeah. went to those Sprouts before, aren't they all? Uh, I was in Denver and I went into one of those Sprouts. It was actually pretty good. It's like all healthy, organic foods, and you can go in there and you can actually even make sandwiches and stuff in the place too. But it's kind of like a, a a grocery store. It's like, well, a farmers market, I guess that gives it away. But <laughs> right. I gotcha. Well, the, the pattern looks similar. You know, it looks just like Twitter before Twitter took off the other day. You know, you got your nice, it's pulling back off highs. You know, could put in a nice little double bottom here. Uh, the trade setup is exactly the same. You're looking for an upside crossover uh, off that peak at, uh, what, about 29-ish. So, so that's one that I'm really watching here. Another one is a single-digit midget. E single F digit midget. What do you got? Yeah, you, you need to put that in your uh, your glossary. Yeah, in the dictionary. Yeah, glossary. Right, right. Extr Extreme Networks. Oh, that one's interesting too. You always like those ones get rocked, and then they try to consolidate, and then they're pulling back to where they got rocked, and then you're looking to pick them up on the cheap there. Obviously, hoping it doesn't. Um, you know, well, yeah, support. You know, support. You know, I'm always looking where support. What's the trade setup? I'm looking for these pullback off highs like this. Um, you know, it's all about chart patterns for us. You know, an upside crossover of that uh, peak, I think it, you know, comes in just shy of $4. Uh, there's your trade. Set a stop and you break below the May lows and you got to walk away. So, so there's a couple of things that I'm seeing out there um, that look pretty decent. Can't complain. You know, if they hit, they hit. If they don't, they don't. There's always another buff somewhere else. Uh, but other than that, um, I got nothing bad to say about the overall market. The indexes, mm, you know, they are what they are. Uh, but I think all the action underneath the surface is looking really good. I'm seeing a lot of names that are trying to come out of their corrections and start working up uh, what we call the right side of a cup, if you will, for those of you who are familiar with cup and handles. Um, Give us a couple of those. Dips. Are those some? Like are they some big caps? Or did you looking at or uh... mostly growth? Mostly growth. Mostly growth stocks. Um, Vips V I P S doesn't look too shabby. Uh, A C T doesn't look too shabby. Uh, Illumina doesn't look too shabby. Regeneron doesn't look too shabby. Salix S A L uh, X P I think it is. I think it's a symbol. Um, but a lot of bios are starting to tighten up in here and you know they could um come up the right side of a cup and uh go on a run for those of you who are familiar with that pattern okay uh anything that uh is looking a little pricey to you um 
I'm gonna agree with Dennis Apple. Ooh. Apple just you know how much of this is um, into the split. Uh, that's kind of kind of what I'm looking at. I'm going, would I buy Apple here? Gosh, where's support? Uh, support six hundred dollars. So you know, it comes down to six hundred. Uh, talk to me uh, at six hundred. It just yeah. sounds like it just it. looks. It just looks like it's your classic pre-split run. Like we were talking that yep. this is typically what happens, and it's exactly what has happened here. We're up forty points from when we really started. Wow, well, we're up a hundred points since when they announced the split. A little bit might right. have been, you know, they did a buyback, they did some other their earnings were pretty good, but uh, most of that reason that we gapped up that forty points that day was that they announced a seven for one split, and then we've continued to run another eighty points since then. I mean. I think it's all right. priced. So that's uh, why I'm... Buy the cheap. rumor, sell the news. Yeah. Think about yeah. it. It sure looks like it. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, if you're buying it here, you're late to the party. So, you know, plus Apple makes up, what, 8% of the index? Um, the NASDAQ 100 is uh, retesting its highs. You can't tell me that Apple hasn't helped the NASDAQ 100 index um, make a run and retest its highs up here. Same thing with Google. Those are two big drivers um, of the indexes. Google looks good, actually. G O O G L. Is the you like I the pullback at. here the last few days? Are you been nibbling on this pullback? We bought this at uh, like 5:30. Yeah. Um, ran it up to the 50-day into the holiday. Well, yeah. you know, of course it uh, ran up another uh, 20, 30 points. If those are your problems, I'll take those problems every day. Um, but you know, it's coming back to the 50 day and which is right around, uh, 550. It's pulling back off its highs. Uh, and I think it's tagging the 20 day moving average too. So you got a couple of things, uh, going on there. Uh, it's a big name. If you want to move the index, that's the name you do it with. And Apple, of course, but Apple's so rich. So... Hey, J. Dot, um, Apple trade split adjusted on June 9th, and uh, so that would be, I would believe that would be Friday, or Monday. 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 Monday is going to be the day. We're going to do a big Apple level show on Monday, and it should be very interesting to see uh, how that thing shakes out. But uh, just want to get uh, your take on a few stocks here that I've been keeping an eye on here. Uh, General Motors here is kind of shrugged off all the bad news. Now it, it's got to the upper end of the trading range here, I've been mm. trading 33. Uh, a lot of it's been 33.50 to 35.50. You did get a little blip blow when uh, Mary Barra was testifying. That's when you went down under 32, and then more recalls took it back under under 33.50 last week. But on the upside, the 35.50 level. Can I can you give me any reason to think that this thing's going to break out this time? Well, look at it since April. Every single time it comes up to 35 and a half, it gets turned down right away that day. So we know that that is resistance. Well, resistance is in play until it isn't. And, you know, if the stock would tighten up here, go sideways really close to this, you know, 35, 35 and a half for maybe a week or so, and then break through, that would be healthy. Uh, but for right now, resistance stands, and it's at uh, 35 and a half. So if, let it, you know, if it breaks out, then you know, old resistance will tend to become new support. And the stock is trading up here this morning. We're trading up at 35.40, 35.26. This is again a Kramer pop. That's why it's trading up here. Last night, Jim Kramer said it's time to buy GM on Mad Money. So getting the Kramer pop here this morning in General Motors. What about its brother-in-law, Ford, Harlan? You got some thoughts on that one? Mm, well, I haven't looked at it in a while. 16 was your uh, triangle breakout. You know, all of that uh, action from April through May. Um, so, you know, right now, support hanging around 16, 16, 20. If we're going to talk cars, let's talk Tesla. Okay, we, yeah, we got a, we got a chart, uh, question coming out of here from Hurt Capital. And uh, he wants to know, what do you think of the cheat areas? Early entry on the right side of a base structure being shaped like in something like uh, Facebook and Baidu. Uh, what's your take on that? I like Facebook. 
Um, you know, a lot of people call it a cheat entry. You know, I get that. If you're a traditional can slim type of person, you know, they would call it a cheat entry because it's you're not buying the stock as it's breaking into a new all-time high after it completed a cup and handle. Um, that makes no sense to me. Uh, it makes no sense to me to buy a stock after it's ran 30, 40 points. I'd rather buy it as it's coming up the right side of a cup uh, versus waiting for the whole cup to form uh, and the stocks overbought to begin with. Now, the beauty of buying the right side of the cup, you're also looking at it when you get into like an uncertain time. Look at BITA, had a completed cup. Well, got slammed the other day, and where did it come right back down to? Right back down to that bottom of a cup support level. So um, I like that. It's a lot lower risk. For me, you know, I'm, I'm all about managing that risk. So if I got to look at buying the right side of the cup, I'll take that over chasing the stock up at an all-time high. Um, just seems to me that why would you want to buy a stock after it's been 30, 40 points when you don't have to? You cannot have... When you, when you look at a cup and handle, there's the left side of a cup, there's the bottom of a cup, and there's the right side of a cup. You cannot have a cup unless you have those three components. And in order to have a right side of a cup, you got to have the bottom of a cup. So, you know, I like the right side of a cup crossover. So I guess it's just a matter of personal opinion. I like that. The cup completion cheat pattern, uh, the triple CP pattern. Uh, what about mankind here? MNKD has had a nice run. Uh, you know, here you are, a drug company. I'm not sure if they're a one trick pony or not, but you can't argue with the momentum in this thing. Uh, how would you, potentially, if you wanted to enter this thing from the long side, uh, how would you approach it? Uh, right now, I'm. Technically speaking, for me, it's chasing. You're chasing a bus. You know, I mean, look at to me, seven and a half stands out. That's right around the 20-day moving average. You know, so you're buying a stock at two point higher than you know, seven and a half. So let it pull back. I see no entry. Um, the only entry I see that was a low risk entry, six and a half, when it crossed over six and a half. Notice how it went sideways. For, yeah, April, for a couple days. Yeah. Bam. That yeah. breakout, that was your trade. I guess if you're trying... You could say that was your right side of a cup, too. Yeah, I guess with this one, I mean, you are breaking through the two highs that you had at 946 and 956. Those were the highs on... Uh, Let's see, on Friday and then yesterday. So here we are. We're back. Uh, we're trading above that. I guess if you're looking for a shorter-term trade and you want to pick this thing up at yesterday's high or the close, 951, you definitely have to risk it down to the $9 level. Right. You, you started talking about, uh, before we went into the other stocks, Tesla there, and we've got her capital. He wants your thoughts on Tesla as well. Um, I do like Tesla. Tesla does look like it's a uh, right side of a cup uh, crossover brewing, um, but that doesn't take place until it uh, breaks over 220. So if you draw a line right across 220, you know, if you can picture what a cup looks like, um, a completed cup, you know, in your mind, well, where is the right side of a cup crossover? It's 220. But right here, you can see the last four, five, six days, one could say it's a bull channel, little bull channel forming here. So, you know, if it crosses over to the upside, we'll probably jump in on it. So Facebook looks the same way. I'm just seeing them all over the place. You sound bullish, Arlen. You sound bullish here um, today. On individual stocks, you know, it's all about trade what you see, and it's all about charts right. uh, with structure that we can work with. So, you know, you look at Facebook, you see the same thing. You see ACT, you see the same thing. You know, I got to trade what I see. So, you know, simple as that. They break to the upside, you know, I'm going to pick them off. And then, you know, then you see the other side of this is once they do break, if they break to the upside and they do indeed go complete cups, they'll come up and retest their highs. So when traditional cup and handle breakout buyers are first looking at it, guess what? We're up 10 to 20 to 30% on them already. That's a nice cushion. 
Sure is, Harlan. How about the overall market here? We're just drifting lower. They didn't like the ADP numbers. And uh, yesterday's low, 16 even. Uh, two lows, Friday and Monday at 13.75 and 14 and a quarter. Now, I think I'd get a little bit bearish here if we took out that level. What are you, what are you thinking here? Well, that's why I'm calling it a market of stocks right here. When you look at the indexes on the surface or you look at that shiny car, on the showroom floor, um, the S and P, you know, this is a resistance zone. Uh, if you line up your tops from uh, January first uh, through now, we're you know banging our head here the last three days, right on that uh, resistance line. Uh, but you know, then again, there's support at 1900. You know, two down days will get you there. Uh, we've seen that plenty of times since uh, April. You get two down days, you get a bounce. Two down days, you get a bounce. So, you know, but then underneath the 1900 level, you know, the 50 days at 1876. So, you know, the S&P, I don't see too much downside to it. I think it's more of an entry um, if we do, you know, come down to those levels. But for the most part, it's just sitting and spinning here. NASDAQ Composite is doing the same thing. Um, came right up. And what's it been doing for the last week? It's basically been going sideways in a chop fest. Uh, but that's okay because it allows stocks to build out structure uh, that you can work with. So sideways markets, they're hard to trade. But, you know, after a run, markets tend to digest those gains two ways. They either do it sideways through time, like the NASDAQ composite, or they pull back uh, via price. So Everything I'm seeing is constructive. So for now, buy the dips at support if you're looking at the indexes. Uh, but, you know, I'm more interested in what I'm seeing under the surface in individual stocks. Okay, Keep we've had on, I guess. Harlan Pine from All About Trends here giving us his take on the market. Harlan, thanks for uh, chiming in this morning, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. Take care. See you later.